Hi guys. It looks like we have a spectacularly gorgeous day here in the end times forming on this Monday morning while I don't know how many thousands upon thousands of people here in Austin, Texas are sitting tied up in traffic probably spending a fucking hour going three miles to get to work. Speaking of get, getting to work, I have to get out back out to Garfield, Texas where I will finally be planting my wildflower seeds. Unbelievable. <laughs> Here on Monday, November 18th, I'm about six weeks late on getting my seeds out, but it should be fine. So before I head out uh, to plant my wildflower seeds, I need to do what I do every day, and that's bringing you my We Are So Fucked headline, and I want to thank uh, good old Chris Hedges and his Truth Dig piece about Extinction Rebellion's Roger Hallam. Before I do that, I, even I want to send out a big thank you. I was absolutely shocked opening up. I want to opening up. Humpty Dumpty Tribe today and finding that I have a new Patreon member. I want to send out a big thank you to kind-hearted Tribes member Frank Van Will for his kind Patreon donation. Uh, I think Frank, he probably the first person in six or seven months uh, to join the Humpty, the, the ever-shrinking Humpty Dumpty Tribe Patreon account. So I really do appreciate it. And anyone who has ever supported what I do on YouTube, particularly over here at Humpty Dumpty Tribe this year, they're where my, uh, <laughs> my, my donations have pretty much <clears throat> collapsed here recently I noticed that you know I'm going comparing the numbers on a Humpty Dumpty tribe and collapse chronicles okay I notice I have 109 new subscribers in the last 28 days 109 uh, new subscribers at collapse chronicles you know that little eco pussy Sam Mitchell He's got 109 people signing on to Collapse Chronicles. Humpty Dumpty Tribe has welcomed two, two new tribes members in the last 28 days. I've probably banned, I don't know how many, I just had to kick some other ass-licking toady off of the tribe today. So I've probably banned more subscribers than I've gotten new subscribers. I, I think that two new subscribers in a month has broken a new record. Let's see if we can get zero new subscribers uh, in the next 28 days. Apparently, uh, the, the, uh, <laughs> the votes are in on Hambone Little Tail that I think we've hit saturation point over here at Humpty Dumpty Tribe, but I really do appreciate you guys sticking with me over here in this dark corner of the universe. Where we're going to move over to uh, today's We Are So Fucked headline and see what uh, <clears throat> Chris Hedges is talking about over there in Truth Dig with his hilarious uh, essay titled how to save the planet how to save the planet and ourselves now i do not have a bullshit detector button here but what uh chris has pretty much turned his rant over to the i guess roger hallam is he the quote leader of extinction rebellion i think roger is finally out of jail so uh I'm going to put the link on here. Uh, I'm going to put the link on here. 
highly suggest you go read this yourself. I'm just going to read about the first, I don't know, maybe 25% uh, of it uh, and then have some comments. So before I get into my review of Chris Hedges' review of Roger Hallam's new book, let's listen uh, a little bit at this goddamn computer. It's, would you get out of here, you fucking thing? Well, if I do this, okay, if I do this, what's going to happen? Well, okay. All right. Goddamn Windows 10, I am so sick of this shit. Okay, take it away, Chris and Roger. This is the Chris and Roger show. We're going to start with Brother Chris. <clears throat> if you read only one book this year, it should be Roger Hallam's Common Sense common sense for the 21st century. Only non-violent rebellion can now stop climate breakdown and social collapse. That's quite the title of a, a book, Roger. Yes, how non-violent rebellion is what is going to stop climate breakdown and social collapse and obviously, uh, Chris Hedges cheering on Roger with this hilariously titled new book. Hallam's lucid and concise book, which echoes Thomas Paine's common sense, says what many of us now know to be true, but we do not say. If we do not replace the ruling elites soon, we are finished as a species. It is a cogent, well-argued case for global rebellion, the only form of resistance that can save us from ecosystem collapse and human-induced genocide. It correctly analyzes the failure of environmental activists in groups such as the hilariously named 350.org to understand and confront global power and thus make a meaningful impact as we barrel toward ecocide. Common sense for the 21st century is a survival manual for the human species. <laughs> there you go. Alright, so what is the first quote that Chris pulls out from Hallam's book? Oh, Hallam is a co-founder of Extinction Rebellion. Quote, quoting Roger, the corrupt system is going to kill us all, at which point the no shit Sherlock button, unless we rise up, close quote, Hallam bluntly warns. Back to Chris, the activism, protest, lobbying, petitions, appeals to the United Nations and misguided trust in, quote, liberal politicians such as Farrakh Obama and Al Gore, <coughs> along with the work of countless environmental organizations, have been accompanied by a 60% rise in global carbon dioxide emissions since 1990. The UN estimates this will be augmented by a 40% rise in CO2 emissions in the next 10 years. Hallam, who has long been a part of the environmental movement, says of his past environmental activism, quote, I was wasting my time. Yes, you were, Roger. And again, guys, one more time. I 100% support Roger Hallam and Extinction Rebellion. Okay, 
That being said, I can also hold the thought, Roger, Chris, you are still wasting your time, but get out there and waste your time like no eco-Nazi is watching. All right, back to Chris. <clears throat> We must reduce carbon emissions by 40% in the next 12 years to have a 50% chance of avoiding catastrophe, according to last year's report by the IPCC. So now we're talking 11 years, of course. But the ruling elites, as expected, ignored the warning or mouthed empty platitudes. Uh, I think that's supposed to be ignored the warning of mouthed empty platitudes, but whatever. <clears throat> CO2 emissions increased by 1.6% in 2017 and by 2.7% in 2018. Carbon dioxide levels went up by three and a half parts per million last year, reaching 415. We are only a decade away, Hallam warns, warns, from 450 parts per million, the level equivalent to a two degree Celsius average temperature rise. Uh, so anyway, what I'm going to do for the rest of this is I'm just going to quote at length from uh, Roger Hallam's new book and then uh, make a few comments. We're going to quote from the No Shit Sher Sherlock part of the book. Now, I haven't read the book, but I'm assuming this is from the first part of the book. I'm assuming that this book like every single other unadulterated horseshit environmental book going back, good God, 80 years now, where they state the problem in clear, concise terms, the no shit Sherlock, we are so fucked uh, terms, and then uh, that they switch on the little hopium uh, whatever that little thing in their brain is and talk about after stating the we are so fucked problem, the unadulterated horseshit, how we're going to turn the freight train around. And here is the latest version of this. But that's at least as long as this is the we are so fucked doomer headline of the day, let's at least let Roger Hallam explain to us a few ways we are so fucked. Take it away, Roger. <clears throat> Let's be frank about what catastrophe actually means in this context. We are looking here at the slow and agonizing suffering and death of billions of people. A moral analysis might go like this. One recent scientific opinion stated that a 5 degree C above pre-industrial mean temperature, we are looking at an ecological system capable of sustaining just 1 billion people. And again, I am no climatologist or even a biologist, but I'm already going to hit the bullshit detector button. I am thinking five degree means a, an ecological system capable of sustaining zero people. But anyway, this is Roger's rant, not mine. Okay. That means, according to Roger, six to seven billion people will have died within the next generation or two. Even if this figure is wrong by 90%, that means 600 million people face starvation and death over the next 40 years. 
And I'm going to jump ahead a little bit. It is time to grow up and see the world as it is. There are some things which are undeniably real, unless you're a book hermit. There are some things we cannot change, and one of those is the laws of physics. Ice melts when the temperature rises. Crops die in a drought. Trees burn in forest fires. Because these things are real, we can also be certain about what the future holds. We are now heading into a period of extreme ecological collapse. Whether or not this leads to the extinction of the human species largely depends upon whether revolutionary changes happen within our societies in the next decade. This is not a matter of ideology, but of simple math and physics. Recent science shows permafrost melting 90 years earlier than forecast in Himalayan glaciers melting twice as fast as expected. Feedbacks and locked-in heating will take us over 2 degrees C even before we factor in additional temperature rises from human-caused emissions over the next 10 years. In short, we are fucked. The only question is, by how much and how soon. And that is exactly right. Uh, thank you, Roger Hallam, for pointing out, in short, we are fucked. The only question is by how much and how soon. And then I'm just going to turn the rest of this uh, over to you to read uh, where Roger, you know, leaves the reality train and goes through how that we are going to rise up and we're going to put uh, those mean old planet eaters out of business, uh, how we're going to do this through nonviolent protest, how we're going to get the police on our side. There's a long article on this. Uh, he talks a lot about, uh, you know, be prepared to be getting thrown in jail or prison for uh, trying to take down the... Uh, the uh, ruling elite. And then, of course, uh, he gets into individual actions you personally can take uh, when you're not out protesting and blocking the streets. Uh, he suggests that one of the easiest and most significant ways an individual can directly reduce his or her environmental impact on the planet is to eat a diet free of animal pr products. So, of course, going vegan. Um, to save the planet. Now, of course, now I have, again, I have not read the book, but I'm going to take a wild guess. I don't know if Roger Hallam is a father or not. I have heard... Uh, from several people, both in comments and private emails, that they have been banned from uh, from uh, Extinction Rebellion, from commenting on Extinction Rebellion site whenever they mention not breeding as the number one way to reduce your carbon and environmental impact on the planet 
that uh, if you want to get kicked off of Extinction Rebellion, it is to barely go there with population and to suggest that not breeding it could be a better way to reduce your carbon and other ecological footprints. You will be kicked off. I'm going to take a wild guess. You will never see the word overpopulation in Roger Hallam's new book. I'm, I'm taking a wild guess here, guys. You will not see overpopulation in the book, and you sure as shit will not see Roger Hallam, uh, whether he's a father or not, suggesting that people keep their fucking peckers in their pants as a hell of a lot more important way to lower your carbon and ecological footprint than becoming a fucking vegan. I'm just taking a wild guess. But let's jump down to the very closing... Uh, let's get back to Chris for the final two paragraphs and then we're going to make some broken record comments. Okay, back to Chris here at the very bottom. The danger, Hallam points out, is that if we do not act soon, we will trigger runaway climate feedbacks or tipping points, at which point no effort to curb emissions will succeed. Now again, there are some people, me probably being one, who understand we have already hit these tipping points. Fossil fuels <coughs> must be swiftly eliminated from the economy. Now, of course, maybe what Chris and Roger do not understand, if fossil fuels were swiftly eliminated from the economy, the same thing would happen to the human population. Since six billion of us are here on this planet because of fossil fuels, if you eliminated fossil fuels from the economy, you would have six billion dead people a lot quicker than waiting around for climate change to fry us. So, but I, I, again, I am. I admit I am one of the six billion people who would be dead if we swiftly eliminated fossil fuels from uh, the economy. But I will sign up whenever uh, Chris and Roger sign up. Okay, including a ban on all new investments in fossil fuel exploration and development. Coal-fired and gas-fired power stations must be shut down within a decade. Yes. This process will require a massive reduction in energy use that may have to include rationing. Uh, Chris Hedges and Roger Hallam know god damn well it ain't gonna happen. This is, this, this, this is, uh, who the fuck are you talking to, Chris Hedges? Hallam is acutely aware that we may fail. Yeah, we may fail at this. Uh-huh. It may be too late already, he admits. Thank you, Roger, for admitting that. But not to resist is to be complicit in this act of genocide. Hallam understands global corporate power. He knows how to fight it. The rest is up to us. <laughs> yes, the rest is up to us. Uh, 
guys, one more time. Read my lips. I 100% support Roger Hallam and Greta Thunberg and anybody else out there marching in the streets or whatever, as long as you don't block my gas-sucking truck from getting from here to Home Depot to rent a gas-sucking rototiller to plant some wildflower seeds. Uh, you know, I, I, I always get back to my broken record rant to 1984, which was written in 1949, that scene, uh, you know, uh, in, the, in the market where, oh God, I always get 1984 in Brave New World. Which one was Winston? I think it was Winston and I, I cannot keep those the two books straight. But anyway, the main character who I th in 1984, I think was Winston. I'm embarrassing myself here, guys. So you know he's, uh, if you haven't read the book or you forgot the scene, so you know Winston is, <clears throat> is, is one of these uh, Chris Hedges, Roger Hallam dreamers that, uh, that the proles, the, the, the common folks, otherwise known as the clueless fucking morons. Those, you know, that 99.9% .9 of humanity, that uh, the, prole <coughs> the proletariat, the working class, is going to rise up and kick these guys out of power. And so he, he hears uh, this, this hubbub going on and he thinks he actually has this momentary flash of insanity where he thinks the proletariat are actually going to rise up and when he gets there to finds out what the, what all the hubbub is about, it's about when the, uh, <clears throat> the, the person selling pots and pans at the uh, at the market, they're down to their last. I think it was a frying pan. It was a skillet or something like that. They only had one skillet left, and all of these uh, women, I guess it was women, people uh, were fighting. Were, were in you know in a big fist fight, trying to get the last frying pan. Uh, available. Anyone who wants to see uh, this repeated, just go on to YouTube and put in Black Friday riots. You, you know, when Walmart starts to run out of some godforsaken little plastic toy this made-in-China plastic toy, you know, when they get down to the last one and all of these mothers having a fist fight so they can give their clueless fucking moron little brat a, a, a new uh, plastic toy from China. And if you want to see some real protest, uh, where, where is the latest one? Uh... Um, um, was it Iraq? Was it Iran? Was it Bolivia? Was it Chile? Was it Venezuela? Good God, uh, which, which is the latest country that raised the price of a gallon of gas? Uh, just the past few days, uh, the latest country has raised the price of a gallon of gasoline. And if you want to see some goddamn... Uh, protest, the quickest way to get the proletariat out on the street uh, in a screaming, frothing uh, mass of outrage, that is for these global elites to suggest that the clueless fucking moron proletariats are going to pay more for a gallon of gasoline. But uh, I noticed that gas is $2.03 a gallon in South Austin, Texas. So I am going to wrap up 
this uh, this uh, we are so fucked doomer headline of the day. Get in my gas sucking truck, head back to Garfield, Texas, to plant some wildflower seeds to save the planet. And I suggest you get out there on this gorgeous fall day and do the same. Bye, guys.